Welcome to this week's episode of Eye on the Tigers. I'm Delaney Barrow, joined by Andy Hewling. And this week, we're going to take a break from our usual programming and instead focus on two sports that are in their off-seasons, football and men's basketball. Let's get into it. First up, we have football. Football is in the middle of their spring season, and they had their first scrimmage last week. Coach Harson, in his press conference right after the scrimmage, talked about how important scrimmaging is for the spring season, looking ahead to fall, and the main takeaways from last week's. The one thing about scrimmages or, or games or live work is you get a chance to see how far guys have really come in their, in their preparation, how that uh, applies to practice, how a practice applies to scrimmages or live situations, and, and then that when you go live, it really doesn't lie. You get a chance to see uh, who can tackle, who can make uh, break tackles. And when we get in there and watch the film, we'll get a better look at that. Uh, but ultimately, I thought as far as just competing, we did do that. Guys were competing. Guys did play hard. Guys showed effort. Uh, now it's about how do we clean some of the details up? And then where are we now at this point with our preparation? How far have we come as a staff with our players? Are we doing a good enough job of, of getting these guys ready to go out there and execute in a moment like we had today? Um, and first glance of that, we've got a ways to go. We've got things that we know we need to work on, and that's okay. Andy, what aspects of this year's new coaching staff are you most excited about? I'm definitely excited to see how uh, Coach Mason brings in his defensive philosophy. It's been a while since he's been a defensive coordinator, and I think, you know, despite his challenges at Vanderbilt that many people saw, I think he's still a guy who brings intensity and uh, brings a passion to what uh, the defensive side of the ball does. And at Stanford, he had a top 10 defense there and, uh, you know, was there during some of the golden years of the Stanford Cardinal. And I think, you know, now that he's back on the defensive side of the ball, I think he can really bring some good things for Auburn, and especially for a team that's going to be young on the defensive line, but has a lot of talent that they have to offer. The team does have a lot of talent, and in his press conference last week, Coach Mason was actually talking about how excited he is with the program that Auburn offers and its raw, current roster, and described himself as a kid in a candy store. I think it's great when you can have an opportunity to you know, step into a place like Auburn and, and look and see exactly you know, uh, uh, what they have, you know, been available to you. I think it's always about players, right? So when we talk about, you know, in football, how do you put guys in the best possible position to, to, to uh, you know, permeate some success? And uh, coming in, we've got all different types. We've got big guys, man. We've got long guys. Uh, you know, so like for me, it's a nice smorgasbord of, of, of players, man, who have different skill sets. Uh, like to be able to see, you know, uh, Stone Handy, uh, who can be a four technique, but who can also slide to an end. Uh, like to see, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wooten as, as, as he can play inside backer, but he can also play, you know, outside backer and walk in space. And I can say the same thing about, you know, Zacoby. I can say the same thing, uh, you know, man, about Owen. I, I, I think the versatility of the front seven, okay, I man, is going to be huge for us just in terms of speed, size, athleticism, and trying to create one-on-one -on -one matchups. So, like, for me right now, I'm like a kid to candy shop. On the other side of the ball, I'm really excited about offense, especially under head coach Mike Bobo. He brings a great pedigree to the program. And he was talking about how this season they're mainly going to be, they're going to work a lot on an aggressive rushing offense, but they're also going to be splitting it with the passing. He said he's been very impressed with Bo Nix and his reps and his dedication to perfection. But on the ground, he's been really impressed with Tank Bigsby saying he's been FaceTiming every day, trying to get those run routes and schemes. And this team, they're really, it's obvious how willing they're to work with the new coaches and how excited they are for where they're going to take this program. But Coach Bobo did say that they're not going to limit themselves to just one side of the offense. And they really want to focus on being pro-style, fast-moving offense. Uh, I, I mean, I guess if get it under center is, is, is old school, I, I guess I'd be considered old school. I think, you know, uh, somebody told me one time, you got to let them know you're at the ballpark. And sometimes there's nothing, not a better way to do that is to get under center and run power at, at you. Uh, and, you know, that's what, you know, we want to be, we want to have a physical run game. Uh, and I think you know, the 
you can be a lot more physical sometimes when you're under center. Uh, but we're going to have elements of, of spread. spread. Uh, we're going to have elements of under center. We're going to have elements of two tight ends. We're going to have elements of a full back. Uh, you know, we want to be able to do everything. You know, we don't want to be just under center. We don't want to be just spread. Uh, we want to be a wide open pro style offense. In terms of new recruits, Auburn did not have their highest signing class this year, but they did have some bright spots. Andy, which recruit are you most excited to watch this season? I'm definitely interested in seeing the kind of the long-term investment of Demetrius Davis, the backup quarterback, looking uh, like he's going to be kind of behind Bo Nix, learning from him this season, and kind of getting into this office that Mike Bobo is going to be putting into the, the Tiger system. And, you know, I think he's a guy, when you look at his tape, he maybe fits more of a, like, when uh, Gus Malzahn was here, he kind of fits that kind of offense. But I'll be interested to see how Coach Harson puts him into his plan. Uh, you know, it's definitely going to be more of a pro-style kind of offense, uh, not as much of the read option. But I, I definitely see Mike Bobo, you know, trying to implement some of that stuff because I know uh, Bo Nix is used to that. He knows he can run the ball himself. So... It will be interesting to see, you know, what they do. But I think Davis is a guy uh, that, like I said, is a long-term investment. He can, you know, definitely come in once Bo Nix is gone and really take over the system. He's an athlete. He's a great player, dual-threat quarterback. So I'll be interested to see what he does over the next couple of years. I, too, am excited to watch Davis on offense. Like you said, long-term investment, very smart for the Tigers. But also on offense, I'm excited to see the two receiver signees and Hal Presley and Tarvarish Dawson. I think that the Tigers lost a couple offensive weapons this year in Seth Williams and Anthony Schwartz, and they're going to have big shoes to fill, but I think that they have a lot of potential. But when you look back at the Tigers' draft class, back in February, they ranked 11th in the SEC. Obviously, not ideal, but the problem was their quantity over quality. They draft, or recruited some really good and talented players, but they didn't recruit as many as other SEC programs. But they're really focusing on building that foundation, even if it's not traditional Auburn recruiting. But as long as Harson is confident in the foundation, and also these players, they really fit into the culture based on what Harson's been saying. So I think there's lots to look forward to in this season, even though their current recruiting rank may not be the highest it's been in years. This team is going to be very fun to watch in the fall. Now let's take a look at men's basketball. Even though their season didn't end too long ago, a lot has happened since their final game. There's been announcements of players declaring for the draft, transfers, and also there's a big new signing class to look forward to. Andy, how do you think these departures, transfers, and even the new additions will affect next year's team? Well, it was very surprising when guys like Jamal Johnson, Javon Franklin, and Justin Powell left. But, you know, I think there's a reason, uh, and it's really just because I think Auburn, um, it's not... It's not really the, the fact that they hated Auburn. I think they're trying to do what's best uh, for them. And, you know, sometimes uh, I think a lot of it was playing time. I think that's a big issue. Um, maybe Powell's is a little bit different because of his injury or just some things that happened. Uh, there's, a lot, you know, there's still a lot of speculation, but I think Auburn's still in a good place. Really, when you look at it, Sharif could be staying. Uh, he, and then uh, along with him and Jabari Smith and Trey Alexander, uh, you know, who are coming in to the fold this year, I think that could be a really dangerous combo. And then JT Thor is uh, declared for the draft, but, uh, you know, he's really just testing the water. So he has an opportunity to come back to school if, he, you know, he's not where he wants to be in the, the draft ranking. So I really think Auburn has the chance to be a really good team next year. They just need to get those pieces in place. We'll see, you know, who stays, who leaves, uh, whatever happens, you know, and then obviously there's probably still a little bit with the FBI investigation, but I think Auburn's got hope for the future. I agree. There is a lot of hope, lots of potential next season, even though it does seem like the Tigers are losing a lot of talent, which they are, but this team, they're already used to playing with a chip on their shoulder, one of the youngest teams in the country last year. Like you mentioned, Jabari Smith will be coming one of the top five players in the country, named to the Naismith All-American first team. And if Sharif decides to say that'll be a lot of talent, like you said, Trey Alexander, I personally don't think JT Thor is going to actually go into the NBA this year. I think he's just, like you said, testing the waters, should come back. And that's a lot. That's a firepower roster. 
for the Tigers. And I think that this team, Coach Pearl has really coached them to where they want to be. But also in this offseason, I think it's going to come down to the basics and just kind of rebuilding because hopefully they'll have a normal offseason, unlike last year's because of the pandemic. But if they can just focus in the weight room, and last year we talked about they increased in size over the summer during that training period. But if they can continue to do that and just get back to the basics and continue to play with that chip on their shoulder, I think this team has a lot of potential to go far next year. But speaking of this past season, now that we're a few weeks removed, looking back, what are some of your main takeaways from how the Tigers performed this year? Well, I think is when you look at negatives and positives, I'd say negatives, turning the ball over. We talked about it so much. They really just had fumble fingers at times. They just could not hold on. They would made you know, some really inconsistent passes. Uh, and it just shows the youth of the team. They were just really young. They made a lot of mistakes. They didn't have guys like Javon McCormick or Samir Dowdy or, you know, even Isaac Okoro uh, who are now, you know, gone and, you know, either playing pro ball or, you know, off in like the G League or something. But, uh, you know, I just think that they're, they're lacking that veteran leadership. And hopefully, you know, as these guys get older and mature and guys like Alan Flanagan and Devin Cambridge who have been there for a while can really step up and take ownership of the team in their junior year. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they perform, but also just getting some guys in that, you know, really just know what they're doing, know how to uh, pass. And I think Sharif is one of those guys. He's just got raw talent. So if he stays, I think he'll be an X factor, uh, you know, as always, uh, you know, when he steps on the court. So I think also when you look at the positives, though, they still could shoot. They still had talent. And, you know, there's guys like JT Thor and uh, Alan Flanagan who really stepped up for their team. And then down low, you know, Dylan Cardwell and Babatunde Akinbola, although they may not have been, like, the greatest athletes, they really were big down low. They provided a presence like, in defense with, block, with blocking shots and forcing turnovers. So I think they have a lot of room to grow, too. And that was a positive, those were some positives that I saw in the season. Yeah, definitely skill-wise, there were some positive highlights to watch. Also, like you said, turnovers, negative. That did have, I think, a big effect on some of the game outcomes. But when you look at the season as a whole, it's hard to gauge it as just like a wash of a season. I wouldn't consider it necessarily, definitely wasn't a winning season, but there were bright spots. I mean, the Tigers played under so much adversity from Sharif's, Sharif Cooper's ineligibility holding him back. And... Their matchups, I mean, they played Baylor, they played Gonzaga, they played a very talented UCF team. They had a very challenging non-conference stretch to start the season, and that really pushed them. And I think it put them in a better place in the end, but when you take a look at this season, there were some highlights. Pearl got his 600th career win. They had ranked upset wins over Missouri and Tennessee. And I think that this team, if they can just build upon this, don't, don't dwell on the downsides or maybe those losses that they should have won this season. But if they can just build upon those high points, I think this team has the ability to start really strong next year as they do begin their workouts over the summer. For our final segment, as usual, we're coming back to our pickums. March Madness is still going on. Saturday marks the final four, and it's Baylor, Gonzaga, Houston, and UCLA. So UCLA came from the first four, now they made it to the final four. The actual championship will be played on Monday, but until then, Andy, Saturday's first game, you have Houston versus Baylor. Who do you have? I'm going to take the upset here and go with Houston. I think they're really starting to catch fire, and Baylor's a good team. Got one of the top offenses in the country, led by uh, Jared Butler and Davion Mitchell. But I'm going to go with uh, the Cougars in this game, and I think uh, they are just really catching fire. They had a good game against Oregon State. They almost blew the lead, but they really started hot, and I think their shooting is what's going to get it done. I'm going to have to go with the Baylor Bears in this one, but like you said, I do think Houston has a chance at this upset. Super excited for this matchup, and I think Houston has one of the best defenses left in the tournament, and even if their shooting isn't hot, their offensive rebounds for those second-chance points, if they're able to capitalize on those, they really could give Baylor a run for their money, but like you said, Davion Mitchell for the Bears is someone to watch, and he just does a great job of leading the team. He plays very cool and collected, and he also has great offensive firepower. So I think the Bears are going to get this win, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Cougars put up a fight. For our second Final Four matchup, we have Gonzaga versus UCLA. Andy, who do you have? 
I'm going to go with Gonzaga in this game. It just the other night against USC, they absolutely dominated them. And they're turning wins against big opponents like USC into comfortable wins. And I just think it's showing their dominance, how good they are. And Jalen Suggs and Drew Timmy are just fantastic. And Timmy is so physical down low. He's a presence uh, under the rim. And Suggs is just getting around to everybody. And I just, I don't think anyone is stopping them at this point from winning a national championship. I have to agree. I think the Zags are going to get this win over UCLA, but UCLA, they're surviving and advancing. They're playing gritty. They have the momentum in their favor. And one player to watch for them is Ju Zhang, who had 28 points against Michigan and transferred from Kentucky. He's really been a superstar for the Bruins. And I don't think that the Bruins are going to make it a super close game. I think that, like you said, Gonzaga with their comfortable wins, They've really just cemented themselves as one of the most talented teams to ever pass through the tournament. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Bruins are able to hang in there for a good portion of the game or even make it close in the end. But I still think the Bulldogs are going to get this final win. And then that will send us into the national championship on Monday. Andy, who do you think is going to win it all? Uh, I'm going to stick with Gonzaga. I think they will beat uh, either Houston or Baylor. Uh, I, if it's Baylor that goes into the, the to the championship game, I think it could be a little bit closer just given Baylor's pedigree and how good they've been playing. But I still think there's a gulf between uh, Gonzaga and Baylor. It's I, I think Baylor's that second team in the tier, at least in the top five, and I just think Gonzaga's just way above them, and they're, they're going to get the win. It may be a little bit closer, like I said, if it's Baylor. If it's Houston, I still think Gonzaga wins, so I'm going to go with the Zags. Regardless, I'm going to have to go with Gonzaga as well. Like you said, there's just such a wide gulf between them and the next team, and they're trying to be that first undefeated team to make it all the way through since Indiana. And like you said, Suggs leading the team, very talented backcourt, great field goal percentage, and they're just firing on all cylinders, and the team plays cool, collected. They obviously have high basketball IQs. They're patient. They're unselfish. They have it all going for them, and so I think the Bulldogs are going to win it all. But we'll have to see on Monday who does get the trophy in the end. That's all we have for you this week. I'm Delaney Barrow, joined by Andy Hewling. For more news and sports updates, head to our website at eagleeyeauburn.com or our Twitter at eetv_sports. underscore sports. Have a great weekend and War Eagle.